Welcome back in, everyone, to another episode of Bite Size Steelers. I am your host, Simon Short. It was a week three victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are now two and one, uh, defeating the Las Vegas Raiders 23 to 18. Pittsburgh goes out west to defeat the Raiders for the first time since 1995, I believe. I got that stat from Alex Cazora of Steelers Depot. Um, Pittsburgh and the Raiders, the Raiders have generally been the thorn in Pittsburgh side, especially over these last five-ish years, it feels like. No matter how good the Steelers team is or bad this Raiders team has been, um, it, it is not usually a good time for Pittsburgh. Playing the Raiders, even wins feel to be close wins, much like this one was 23-18 to 18 last Sunday night. Let's go ahead and dive into it. We'll start with the Steelers offense. Kenny Pickett was 16 of 28 in this game, 235 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, just one sack. The stats don't look great. I mean, 16 completions in, in, in a game in 2023 is not very many. It's not very good. Um, but only taking the one sack and having no turnovers, that's the thing that's most important for Steelers wins right now. And, and just watching the game, watching it back, watching the tape, it, it looked a lot better. The offense looked a lot cleaner. Pickett looked more comfortable in the pocket, still not where you would want to be, still not even where he was, you know, weeks 15 through 18 last season. I don't think uh, I've talked about this before, but I did. I, I broke down every single one of uh, Kenny Pickett's games last season. That's still, uh, I believe, over on famsportsindustries.com. But my biggest thing for Kenny Pickett was staying calm in the pocket. That, that was the scouting report on him coming out of pit. And it's not just that he tries to escape and scramble the pocket too frequently. It's not just that he rolls out. But frequently when he feels any sort of pressure, real or perceived, he drops back and, and down and far to the left. And that's not a great position to be in. It's something that uh, he got better at in his rookie year. But he showed a lot of ha uh, reverting back to those habits in the first two weeks of the season. He did it a bit early on in this game against the Raiders, but he did finally settle in. We also saw him take off and scramble a couple times, which was which was good. He's a good enough athlete to do that, um, and, and especially a good enough athlete to do that instead of drifting back into the pocket and taking a sack. So I, I was happy, uh, maybe not happy, I was happier with Kenny Pickett's play in this one. A lot of that ties into the offensive game plan by Matt Canada, which we have who we have harped on already this season a, a ton, but I did feel like the offense made more sense, a little more coherent, a little more put together. Felt like things were building off of each other a little bit as the game went, you know, runs in certain directions, feeding into passes and, and boots and, and sprint outs on the other side, things of that nature. And just generally the play calling felt a lot better. Felt like there were a lot more opportunities, a lot less running into a, a brick wall or lack of running because let's get into this. We have broken the streak. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers started a game with a run. They started with three runs in a row, in fact, on the first drive, four runs of their first six plays. Um, this was great to see. It wasn't supremely successful, 31 carries for 105 yards in total on the day. Uh, Najee Harris, 19 carries for 65 yards. He had a 17-yard run. Jalen Warren had eight carries for 29 yards. Um, and I will say for Najee, he had a 20-plus yarder that went down into the low red zone. That was called back for George Pickens not being fully set on, on the opposite side of the field. So there there was even some yardage that they left um that, that they left off the left on the bone there uh for Pittsburgh. But it was good to see them run the ball. It was good to see them run the ball more successfully. Um Chris Collinsworth said this a lot on the broadcast, but just getting back to basics a little bit, a lot less of the zone running, zone running scheme that we had been seeing over the last uh, year, but especially over the two games, and just a lot a lot of duo. Just, uh, hey, create an initial hole, give our running backs a chance, and um, see if they can create something. And they definitely did um, to a much better extent than they had the first two weeks. Uh, the pass catchers, no one really stood out. George Pickens, four catches, 75 yards. He had that 32-yard uh, big play on the slant. He had six targets working the middle field. Yet again, uh, Pat Fryermuth. He was one of our keys going into the game, get him more involved. Three catches, four targets, not a lot, but key moments uh, in, in clutch situations. He obviously scored the last touchdown of the game for the Steelers as well on a great play. Allen Robinson showing 
exactly who he is. I mean, if you're wondering why Allen Robinson isn't going for eight catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown, you're you're looking at the wrong thing. Um, but four catches, 24 yards, just solid, uh, uh, finds a soft spot in the zones and is a good release player for Kenny Pickett. Um, Jalen Warren got mixed into the action as a pass catcher as well, three receptions for 23 yards. So overall, again, the offense just much more in tune with, I think, what – we expected uh, going into the year a lot more running can still be better. Um, the the tight ends you're you're you need a little bit more blocking, but guys like Calvin Austin and and um, obviously George Pickens and Al Robinson are all blocking downfield well, which is nice to see. Um, Dan Moore is continuing to struggle. The advanced statistics on him aren't great either. It doesn't look terrible on tape, I will say, in a lot of. Dan Moore's issues, I think, are compounded by Pickett's um, inability to stay strong in the pocket. Same for Chooks. But if you look at some of the advanced metrics that are out there right now, Dan, Dan Moore is, is struggling. So probably sooner rather than later that we see one Broderick Jones step in at some point here. Um, but Pickett, overall, better pocket discipline. We saw him climb the pocket a couple times and get out and scramble, which I mentioned. Um, and just overall the run game being more sound. You know, you get 30 rush attempts for 98 yards in the first two games compared to 31 for 105 here in game three. You will take that all day, and hopefully it's just a sign of more to come. On the defensive side of things, another good defensive game for the Steelers. They have four sacks in this one. It was the first sack that Jimmy Garoppolo had taken this year, and they got four of them. Um, two by TJ Watt, one by Keanu Benton, his first sack of his career, and one by Marcus Golden. Uh, which I believe is his second on the season as well. Uh, Cole Holcomb got involved in the game. He had the big hit on Devonta Adams over the middle of the field um, to break up a, a big completion. He had another tackle for loss. You definitely are feeling Cole Holcomb's presence in the middle of the field, kind of just roaming around, getting involved. Every week it feels like the impact and the need for the linebackers is shrinking, um, which is good. That's what you want to see. You You want them to kind of blend in a little bit more for the talent level of those guys. You know, it's not a Fred Warner where you want and need him to make a bunch of plays. You just want them to sort of like a corner or an offensive lineman for the most part, the occasional splash play, but for the most part, just do do a solid job. Um, let's see. They also had three interceptions in this one. It was nice to see Patrick Peterson and Levi Wallace get um, a couple picks between them. I think those guys need the confidence. They need the swagger boost, especially Levi Wallace guy who's just so steady he was getting killed for the the his play the first couple of weeks definitely some some low moments his first inter interception was probably the best one of the three on the day um i think it's pretty easy to say and so just really good to see a guy that um i think needed that confidence boost as a cornerback's heart you know you get beat a lot especially in today's game and you kind of have to stay mentally tough mentally engaged or else it's like quicksand and you you, you can't escape it so I think this interception will help him a lot. Um, we saw some more good snaps from Joey Porter Jr., who don't get too excited. I don't think he's going to get a bigger role anytime soon. But, um, you know, it, it's good to see him playing well. Patrick Peterson, that that touchdown to Devonta Adams, really just a, a perfect storm of, of bad situational type things. For it to be fourth and one, Pittsburgh to call for a little, a little switch action play where Patrick Peterson was taking – taking over the safety roll back there with the safety dropping down um, on that side. Gets there late. Levi gets beat. Devonta Adams and, and Jimmy Garoppolo just perfectly in tune for that touchdown. But it was tough to see Patrick Pearson like, actually get there in time to make a play on the ball and completely whiff and, and miss where the ball was. Um, it's been a rough few weeks for Patrick Peterson. Hopefully he can uh, get back on track. The defensive line looked good, even with Cam Hayward being out on IR. Montrevious Adams and Keanu Benton, who I mentioned got his first career sack earlier. They were strong up the middle, making plays. They looked really athletic. Um, TJ Watt, obviously, with his two sacks. Alex Highsmith, a little bit uh, of a quieter quieter game going against Colton Miller, that left tackle, who, who's an above average tackle, really, really good. So um, he, he was a little bit quieter, but TJ was definitely felt his two sacks uh, were, were super important in this one, as always. The Raiders, the Raiders were able to move the ball. Uh, Devonta Adams had a huge game. He had 172 yards on 13 catches. Jacoby Myers added 85 yards on seven catches. 
Jimmy Garoppolo over 300 yards on the day. Um, so so their their passing game was able to move stuff. Uh, Devon Adams, especially over the middle, was seeing a lot of opportunities there. So we mentioned in the preseason show that communication on the back end, uh, new corners, new safeties, new middle linebackers, um, being able to plug up the intermediate to deep part of the middle of the field is going to be really important for the Steelers to continue to work on. But when you can get four sacks and and three picks off the quarterback in a game, uh, especially when your quarterback throws no interceptions and only takes one sack, you should be in pretty good shape. But, of course, the Raiders getting uh, into touchdown position on a couple of their last drives there really made this game closer than I think Steelers fans wanted or expected from the first half. But, hey, that's how it is watching Steeler games. Um, let's see for Pittsburgh. Other than that, uh, Presley Harvin had another great game, six punts, 323 yards, three punts inside the, inside the 20, um, 63 yard long. Chris Boswell had a big game, 57 yarder that he just absolutely nailed. That was great to see, um, more special teams kick return. Desmond King, we saw active in this one. Um, not sure if he logged any defensive snaps. I'll pull that up. I don't think he did. But um, we saw him as the kick returner in this one, which was really interesting because Mike Tomlin does not generally have defensive players be the kick returner, especially the designated starter with um, Gunnar Olszewski out of this one and Anthony McFarlane, who's now on IR. Um, you were wondering who that next guy would be. I kind of thought it might be uh, maybe they would give Calvin Austin a chance to to do it. Um, they actually had James Pierre uh back there for a kick return last year. Now that didn't go well. He mistimed it. I think there was a bad bounce somewhere um, and they lost a bunch of yardage on it. Um, but he had at least done it for for Mike Tomlin before. The Desmond King uh, kick returning was even more interesting in this one because the Steelers had, of course, called up or, or signed Godwin Iguifuque, uh the running back from the, I believe, the Falcons practice squad. We talked about it last week in the in the preview show. We thought he might get some work as a return man in this one, but Godwin just coming to the team was inactive for this game. So we'll see if he's kind of in the mix to um, uh, return kicks next week and over the next couple of weeks until Anthony McFarland returns from IR. Uh, the rest of the inactives uh, from, from this game, some interesting ones, Mason Rudolph and Dylan Cook, which were expected. Um, Gunnar Olszewski expected uh, still in concussion protocol. Um, Iguabuke, who we mentioned, Des Fitzpatrick and Braden Fajoko, though. Those guys were both signed to the 53-man roster. Pittsburgh elected to roll with just four receivers on the active roster for the day. Um, do that with the two tight ends and then Connor Hayward. So kind of light on the um, on the offensive weapon standpoint. I found that interesting that Fitzpatrick wasn't active little little interesting of you know you bring him up to the 53 um when when Deontay Johnson goes to IR or, or is hurt and then eventually goes to IR he doesn't play with Johnson out against the Browns and then he doesn't play with Gunnar Olszewski still still not ready so what's Fitzpatrick's role what 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 is he you know is he on the 53 just as a super emergency receiver is he there because you're seeing what you can do with James Pierre. Is he there for protection for Miles Boykin? You know, because think about the, the gunner position on the punt teams. Um, and then Brady Fajoko. You know, I thought, you know, especially because this guy has been with the team through the offseason stuff. Um, was Probably, I think, from the outside, at least appears to have been very close to making the 53. Went to the practice squad. Um, you, you thought he, he would be active in this one. So I, I found that interesting um, because of his run stuffing ability. We knew the Raiders would want to run the ball. Uh, they obviously weren't too successful. Only 19 carries for 69 yards. The longest run on the day was 10. So so they weren't hurting for um, Fajoko in this one. But just interesting that a guy that's been around all this time um, for the season to have been called up and signed to the 53-man roster and not active on game day. Pr pretty interesting for for him and Dez in, in that regard. So those were the inactives. Um, those two guys were pretty surprising. Iguabuke, we'll, we'll monitor him. We'll kind of see what, what he becomes. And then 
you know, what does that mean for Desmond King? Because, like I said, King took no defensive snaps, was the kick returner in this one. Um, seeing how these roles kind of continue to develop will be pretty interesting. Um, I mentioned the role of Joey Porter Jr. in, in this game. He's playing in dime packages, um, which they did a little bit more of. Uh, he, he played in 27 snaps, 38% of the snaps. Keanu Benton, we thought we might see an increase in his role, 21 snaps, 29% of the defensive snaps in this one. Um, so they're really, they're just taking it easy on the, on the, on the early round rookies, you know, um, obviously Roger Jones not playing. So those are your first three rookies um, getting, you know, less than 40% of the snaps. Um, they're, they're bringing these guys along slowly. And I know that's frustrating for some fans. I would love to see, especially Keanu Benton, even more right now, Joey Porter Jr., that's more he, he is playing well, but uh, that's more frustration with the guys above him. Whereas Benton, it's just like this guy looks ready to go right now. And, and Kim Hayward's out. Um, w- w- what are you guys waiting for? But you know, take it take it slow with these guys. That's why the development track for for so many players ha- has gone well in Pittsburgh. So I will trust the process on that one. Um, uh, but hey, it was a good win. It, it's not what you wanted as a fan um, in terms of, hey, I I mean, at least for me personally, I think the Raiders are going to be a bad team, a bottom three team of the league this year. You would like more than a five-point win, but this is a Steelers team that, like in recent years, has gotten, well, uh, is hoping to get better as the season goes along. Um, So you would like to think that maybe week the week 10 version of these teams, it would be a bigger win. But in my mind, it was a must win because if the Steelers couldn't beat this Raiders team, still with Josh Jacobs not being, you know, his full self yet, um, I would have some I would have some serious concerns about this team moving forward. But hey, it's a win in the record book. This team is two and one, three way tie um in the AFC North. So that is good that they are keeping pace. They play the Houston Texans next week, who despite having a rookie quarterback with three backups uh, on the offensive line, has been playing very, very well. Um, but we'll do that in the preview episode that'll come out later in the week. So that is all for our week three recap. Again, thank you so much for listening to Bite Size Steelers. Um, I am Simon Short. Make sure you're checking out the rest of our Bite Size uh, podcasts and, and YouTube videos. And we'll talk to you soon.